Right, so today Penny and I are going down to Glen Russian. The Glen Russian farm to be exact. Or Karen's farm, depending on which um, history channels you follow or history you read up on. It's a large place on the track that goes down from the round table to Glen May. And um, decent path. It's not private, but just beware of the sheep. So uh, if you follow me now, we'll uh, go down and have a chat about it. It's a decent day again. And all the forecast is bound to change, they tell me. It's a decent path down to it. Not too demanding. Lots of stones. It's uh, now farmed by Mr. Paul Castain. Down south. And I can see his... Um, Highland cattle walking through the villages, especially down south. Mostly sheep, although the cattle are up here sometimes. It's about uh, I know, half a mile long, I suppose, maybe longer. Obviously, easier to go down than to come up. Most places are. Farmed in its own right until the early 1930s. We've got a bit of history of it, which we'll talk about when we get nearer to it. I've been to it several times over the years, and it's probably one of the ones that really should be preserved, I guess. It wouldn't do any harm to invest in some preservation of it either. It's another glorious May Day. Too windy. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave all the walk in. It's a bit te tedious. I do love kippers and had a lovely pair of kippers for dinner, but they do give me indigestion. So, what else can I tell you about the uh, forest on my left here? This one is called Glen Russian. And uh, across the valley there, that other plantation eventually goes to a place called Thalo Quain. And if you've seen uh, some of my videos, you'll know I did Thalo Quain a few months ago. I can't believe that. It's February time, I think. Nice and snow on the ground. And there's a story which ties Thalo Quain to Glen Russian Farm. No, we've had to go through lockdown and it's been a bit trying for most people, but It's nice to actually be out on my own really sometimes too. Just the dog and me. Runs all the way down to Glen May as I said. To a thing called the pipeline. And when I was doing my videos, I did ask people for some feedback and how if anything I could improve them and make them better. And as I said on Facebook, some said to make them longer, some said make them shorter. Some said don't bother, some said carry on, don't change, please change, and the general consensus is you can't please everybody. So I did pick up some very good points though, and I forget I've lived in Ireland all my life, so I know most of these places without having to look for a map, but a lot of people don't of course. So I'm going to incorporate a map of these places, so you'll know where you're going to before you set off. And um, so they'll always let you know if I think it's a bit demanding for the, shall we say, non-expert walkers. Now the track we're on today would have been at one time the main road, believe it or not, from here to Glen May. And um, you come up to the round table and they would come up with a track called the Whiskey Run, which you'll have to do sometime. And it's called the Whiskey Run for obvious reasons. But um, in the old days it was used for smuggling, I guess. And um, that track goes to Ronig or down to Colby, depending on which branch you take. So as remote as it is today, because of the change in the highways, this was the main road, which is why you'll find an awful lot of ruins on these tracks that seem to be abandoned. But 
There was a reason for them. As I said, this place was abandoned in the 1930s. So not abandoned is the wrong word. It has been farmed since, but not lived in. If you do venture to this area, there's loads of things to see. As I said, it is a rambledge area, but there are sheep about. Please shut the gate. Most farmers are really agreeable to people being out, but just obey the rules, please. I, like you, love to be able to do it. I'd hate to have it taken away from us, which is what will happen. For all the shadows and brightness really does struggle, or well, the camera does struggle to put up a decent exposure for both, so probably have to do a little bit of manipulation. This farm was tagged in with Clock Bane, which is just a bit further down. And I need to do that sometime too, but we go from Beckwith Mine to that place. And Clock Bane's got one of the nicest walled gardens I've ever visited. And it's still completely intact. House is gone, buildings are one or two there, and some old bits of cars, but the walled garden, delightful. Also in this track going down by the road, there's called the Battle of El Chapel. I think all of these are in my books actually, can't remember which volume. Well I don't think I ever got around to putting this farm in it, which is quite surprising. I suppose it was because I was planning to do volume 4. And it would have been the, make, the main one in volume 4. I've got a few photographs to put to it as well. And you can just see the chimneys there. In the distance. Behind it is Beckwith Mines, we'll do that sometime as well. So this is a lovely little part of the track. I'll definitely leave this in because I love the, the gorse this time of year. Penny! Well, I love it all the time you got to. Because it's always out in flower in the old moon. Even though it's not a natural species, it looks as if it's been here forever. So we get to uh, Clarenation Farm or Balavelle, or Balavelle, or Karen's Farm. It's more, not, more known as, but I always think it is Glen Russian Farm, to be honest, because this area is Glen Russian. That's was known as, and all the farms down here all got names. But the only farm I couldn't find a name for is Glen Russian. I'm doing some homework on the Eye Museum site. There is a, a recognition of Glen Russian Farm. But then it changes over in the 1900s to Karen's Farm. Obviously because the Karen's Farm did have owned it for many years in that time scale. It's still an impressive place to visit though. So, um, please, please get it on your list to do. Kids will love it. I think there's even a swing down here somewhere. But I watched some videos on YouTube and they're really excellent videos and some quality. But there's no commentary. I really think you need the commentary. Even as a twaddle like I talk. Because it just gives that extra dimension. So I'm using a gimbal, Zion. And it really is a good little machine. And without that, this thing would be jerking all over the place. Although the camera has its own stabiliser built in as well. The two together does make it fairly easy to watch. So there you are, that's a, a grand shot, I think, of Glen Russian. Karen's farm anyway. And um, as I've said to you many times before, the garden at the front here, thorn trees on it. And these get kept as bushes in the old days. And they would be there to dry the pots and pans on and clothes and so forth. And any other things, everything had a use, nothing was ever ornamental. The garden I doubt would be flowers, it would be um, vegetables I guess up here. So we'll uh, approach the, uh, well this is probably an old window I guess, now down to ground level. As 
as you can see it's a chunky big house and um, it's a much bigger fireplace this side looks like it's still got some of the old metal work too these old fireplaces came from a place called Gellings Foundry in Douglas um, I'm not sure whether they made it but they certainly supplied them so these two rooms here would be called the kitchen and the parlor I guess and you can see where the cupboards would have been in the corners still got their uh, little bits of wood places left where they would have been attached to the wall pattern on the wall from the weather eh? or snails or some insect this here place would have been called the scullery must have been added to a later date you can tell where it's pulling away from the wall at the top there and that should be on the way someday main barns on the left well, let's take some of these barns I think when we're here Penny this here barn I think would have been by the looks of it the thrashing barn I'll tell you why I know that because And at ground level here, that's where the axle would have come in from the mill. It's outside, which I'll show you that in a minute. They say the old timber wood for me came from a shipwreck, but I'm not sure about that. It does look like it could do, especially on the outside. Yeah, it's possible, I suppose, it's possible. Just here, or just the, in front of you, there's the steps to an imaginary loft. And they would have walked up there to get into the loft, the floor above. Details that they would have produced just to make things easier for themselves. can see this wall here it's rounded so that when cattle came around the corner they wouldn't knock the stones out or get caught on it and details like that's just amazing and here steps going up to the garden again all to make it easier this little place in front of us here is the um, WC or Thigh Veg as its Manx known name is and these were the uh, nesting holes I think see that or not it must have been the seat a stone seat and be cold in January So it'd be a big farm and it'd stay at this place. Uh, 100 and well, all together with Clock Bain, it's 350 acres. To have one in our house at home. 
I was always put there, my dad always told me I was put there for the AI man, so when he came to look after the cows, that was somewhere to hang his trousers. When you're seven year old, that seems quite believable really. I don't see any stalls in any of these places though. Come up and look at these places. Let's have a look at the uh, cornerstones. They'll all be knocked out. I was told they're knocked out because when they bought by the company who bought them, they wanted a bit to build on them or live in it, so they made it impossible to get planning. Well, that's true or not? Who knows? Because of the size of the doorway for this, this is, would be the cart shed, I guess. Strange. The brickwork above it. Wind whistling in the trees. Very pleasant. Even more to look at yet. So this is the old horse walk, or it's a thrashing machine I should say. And it was connected to the shed inside as you know. Cog run, or the axle runs under my feet. The building inside and they would use this for thrashing oats. Horses would walk around here all day. That would be their job. As I said, across the valley from where I'm sitting, Thalo Quain sits in the hillside across there. And there's a Mr. Nelson who used to be a station master in Colby. I worked down there, he used to walk up here. It was tea with the Karens, I guess. And they were telling their tale that the people of Thalo Quain and the people in this place used to keep a light in the window. And the light would be permanently lit if the light went out, there was a problem. Anyway, one night the light went out in Thalo Quain, so they all got their gear on and walked across the valley, which is a long way for most of these days, but not far, down the, up the other side, and it was deathly quiet across there, not an animal sound anywhere. And when they opened the door into the house, there was a, all the stuff was still in the house, utensils and coats and stuff and furniture, no animals. A little note on the table just said, gone to America. So it was, um, been farmed for, by the Karens for many, many years. And in the 1883 census, William and Anne Karen were here. And they had eight kids, six daughters and two lads. And I think most of the daughters left the Isle of Man, as did one of the lads, but one stayed. It was Thomas Caron, and uh, he, in, he inherited the farm in 1913 from his father. Uh, doesn't say whether his siblings got any money or not or anything out of it, but he got the farm. And he farmed it until 1932. Uh, before the uh, Carons had it, it was owned by a chap called Before they had it, it was owned by a fellow called Joseph Folder, and he had it from the 1820s to the 1870s. And I don't think he farmed it, I think he owned it anyway. And the Carons then farmed it. And I think William Caron bought it in 1908. This in Clack Bain Farm, which is 300 acres for 230 quid. Just a night out these days, but I suppose it was a lot of money those days. It was finally sold to Peel Water Company in 1932 
Well their plan then was to turn the whole lot into a, uh, a catchment area. They are going to dam Glen May and make it into a large reservoir. Uh, but obviously that never happened and if you come up to this place you'll see that all the cornerstones are knocked out. It's not vandalism, they probably were knocked out so they, they wouldn't be built upon. But on this area there's loads and loads of Thaltons and ruins. Uh, it's worth spending a day, it's Rambridge country. It's not illegal, just shut the gates, beware of sheep and cattle. And then 32, Mr. Karen had a farm sale. Sold off his uh, good quality stock, which was um, <laughs> Angus and Shorthorn crosses. And he had a note to have a reaper and a binder. And they were made by a company called, or should I say, he had a reaper and a binder by a firm called Harrison. Else, Harrison self binder reaper. So I can find some pictures to see what it looks like because I'm quite curious. So I'll take a few pictures now just around the place of bits and pieces which are related to it and try and make some sense of it. So I hope you've enjoyed some of it. <laughs>